What is up everyone, my name is Abbas, your Protopy expert, and welcome to part 2 of the web transitions tutorials that we're doing. In this tutorial, we will learn how to do an animation that appears as you scroll onto a specific portion of the web page. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to check out part 1 of this tutorial series because we will be doing some of the same things that we did in part 1 of this tutorial, which is how these things fell into place. We're going to be using some of the similar concepts and we will make the same kind of transition happen here when you scroll onto a specific portion of a web page. All right, so let's jump back into our working file and let's take a look at what we've made so far. So, so far we just have the initial elements falling into place, but the website isn't scrolling yet. So let's start by making this scrollable. To do this, I will go ahead and select all of the layers from the layers panel and press command G. Alternatively, I could also press right click and then do a group selection. What this does is it groups all the components that you've selected into a container. Now, for this container, I'm gonna go into the properties panel on the right and where it says scroll paging, I will select scroll. By default, all the values are correct for us. We have vertical scrolling enabled. For any over scroll, there's gonna be a bounce effect and the default scroll position is zero. So let's see what this did. I'm gonna go into preview, and now as I start scrolling, it, it kind of works, but it also kind of springs back into its original position. Now, this is happening because our container is the same height as all of the components inside of it. What we want is for the container to be smaller so that scrolling can occur. In our case, we want it to be exactly 1024 in height. Right now it's 4196. So let's go ahead and change this to 1024. Now let's see what this looks like. Now you can see that we're able to scroll the web page perfectly. Now we want, whenever we scroll on to this specific area of the web page, we want certain transitions to happen. We want certain animations to occur. To do this, we'll use the same technique that we used in part one of this tutorial. We'll go ahead and initialize these cards into a position and opacity where they need to be coming from. So to do that, I will go ahead and add another start trigger. I could again go ahead and use any of the existing ones, but just for cleanliness and organization, I'm gonna make a new one. In this start trigger, I'm gonna go ahead and select this layer, and then I will add an opacity response. So I want the opacity to be zero. I'm gonna press Command C and Command V and duplicate this guy and then apply the same thing to shape 2 because it also needs to be at opacity of 0. And do the same thing for shape 3. Once again, what we're doing is we're initializing these cards to a point where they need to be coming from, not where they're going to be because they're already at where they need to be. So now all of the opacities are at 0. I'm also going to go ahead and add a move response so that it looks like these cards are coming from a point slightly lower than where they are right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a move response. And I'll start by applying it to shape one. And what I want is I want it to move by, let's say downwards by, let's say how about 56 pixels. I don't want a lot of movement. So, and then I'm gonna duplicate this guy and then change it to shape two and then paste the response again and then change it to shape three. So all of these three different cards are gonna come from a slightly lower point. Now that they're initialized, let's see what this looks like. Now you're gonna see nothing at all because all of the initial responses have taken place. We will make one more change though, and that is I'm gonna make the duration to zero because this needs to happen instantly as the prototype loads. Finally, when we scroll to this position, we want it to kind of animate into place. And to do that, we will use a range trigger. So let's go ahead and add a range trigger. The range trigger comes into effect as soon as a specific layer reaches a specified value. So in our case, it is container one, and the value that we wanna check for is its scroll position. So as soon as the scroll position reaches a certain point, we want these guys to kind of animate back into place. So what is that scroll value? Well, we know that 
from this point to this point, it's going from scroll value of 0 to a scroll value of 1024. I think that should be perfect. So let's go ahead and put a 1024 here. What this does is it will check for the scroll of our container and make sure if it's greater than 1024, this range trigger is going to come into effect. I'm just going to go ahead and press enter here so you can see the change here. And now as a response, what we want is we want it to come back into its original position, what you see on screen right now. And that can be done by using our very special response called reset. We want to reset the position and opacity values of all three cards to what you're seeing on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and select shape one, then command C and command V to duplicate that response and then apply it to shape two and then command V again and then this time apply it to shape three. Let's see what this does. So now as I scroll to 1024, these cards kind of spring into place. Now I want to fix two things. First of all, I think the scrolling is happening too late. We don't want to see the cards at the end of our scrolling. We want to see them maybe at somewhere here. They need to pop in. And then the second thing is they're popping in all together and super quickly. So let's first fix that. I'm going to go ahead and select all three of them and make the duration, let's say, one second. So it's super nice and graceful. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change their order. So maybe I want the yellow card to show up first, so there's no delay here. For the red one, I want it to show up at 0 0.2 seconds. And the third one, for the teal one, I want it to show up at 0 0.4 seconds. So now let's take a look at how the transition looks. So it's happening, but like I said earlier, it's happening when we're scrolling too far. So let's go back into our file. So instead of scrolling all the way down to 1024, what if we were to maybe subtract this by 200 pixels? I think that's going to look pretty good. So let's go into preview. And then now whenever you reach a scroll value of 824, the cards come in. And this looks pretty good. You can go ahead and use a different value if you like, but I think we can go with 824. So let's take another look at this. Now as you scroll, these cards move into place. All right, now wasn't that easy as pie? That's it for part two of this tutorial. In part three of this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to make certain elements scroll horizontally as we continue scrolling vertically. All right, so I'll see you there.